Professor Elwood Pricklethorne, tell me what we're doing here today, sir. Well, today is about a book launch. It's called 10 Ways to Kill a Tree, and it's a new book. It's, it's, we call it adult content, and uh, what it is, it's all the 10 things we do to trees that we don't even realize that we're doing that bring harm to trees. Like, for instance, putting a, a wire around a tree, it's called girdling a tree, and it's going to bring death to the tree eventually. Or volcano mulching, where those young trees, they, people put mulch right up in a volcano form around them that's going to cause stress and illness to a tree or changing the grade of roots or improper pruning or improper species selection. So Cobra Gardas, Jenny Duda and I got together and we collaborated with a publisher, Julie Hinton, and we put together this book full of like educational tips basically on how to look after your trees. So there's all these kind of nefarious things that we do to trees, but on the other side, there's things that you should be doing to counter that. So it's good for the trees and, and good, uh, good educational piece. Why is this important to you? Oh boy, because trees are important to me. Like trees are, are the, like, the canary in the coal mine in our communities. Like we're only gonna be as healthy as the trees are around us. So trees are like a secret weapon, you know, with the community health, public health, mental health, everything. Tell me about uh, your AKA professor. Tell me about uh, what you do in reality and tell me about how you know your uh, background concerning trees. Well, I'm not far off my base here because I work in an area where there's water just over the way. I work on Toronto Island as the park supervisor for City of Toronto. And, and for many years I've been a certified arborist going back to the early 90s and trees have always been my passion. And I think that started in Coburg right in my backyard at Cottesmore Avenue where we had a massive big uh, black walnut. We had um, some lilacs and different species of trees and my mom really kind of you know, wet it, got my appetite going on it. And uh, I followed that up working at Sheridan Nurseries near Port Hope. And I, I've always followed trees, even though I've been doing parks maintenance and I worked on golf courses. Trees have always been like the centerpiece of my passion. Do you find they're underappreciated? They are, but it's getting better. Like you look at major municipalities now, they have like bylaws for trees, protection. I call them tree police, where, uh, you know, if you're going to do some work that you're going to have to put like a deposit on the tree to guarantee its safety and wellness during the construction period. So people are taking, more, taking it more serious. You've been, how long have you been Professor Elwood Pricklethorne for? Oh boy, it's probably coming up to about 10 years now. How did that come about and where have you been with it and what's oh. your experience with it? Uh, it started because I would go to the island school on Toronto, Hoss Toronto Island as Warren Hosselton and I would just get up and, and talk about my passions and shortly after that I got involved with what's called Acorns of Hope. It's a uh, tree ride in, in southern Louisiana where we planted several thousands of live oak trees and it was over about four years every November and I was called into a school there to do my speech as, as I usually do and we were in New Orleans I think it was probably a full moon and you know we had some other stuff going on and we went into a secondhand shop and I got like a crazy uh, wig that was like brown and I got crazy glasses and then I went into the school as Elwood Pricklethorn and and I could really kind of cut loose and I noticed the kids perked up a little bit more when I animated it I brought in like some crazy props and I brought this back to Toronto with me and I started doing this in schools and you know just some of the areas I've been in Nashville Boston Portland uh, Chicago Buffalo um, Fort Lauderdale Orlando Oh, and I was supposed to be in Dallas in June, and I should be in Colorado right now if it wasn't for COVID, doing it in Colorado. All the places uh, you've been, uh, Toronto, et cetera, working, you decided to do this here in Victoria Park where we have so many trees. Tell me a little bit about the reason why. I could use all the puns about roots, but this Coburg truly is my roots. And, uh, you know, Jenny being from here, and uh, I can't think of a, a better scenario, uh, surrounding to be here to talk about trees. And I remember being a kid, being in this very park, and I know the trees have disappeared a little bit over the years, but I, I am uh, happy to see that there are some small trees being planted strategically, I would assume. And, um, yeah, no, this, I'm home here. I'm at home.